So our last Hulk Hogan video left off at WrestleMania 3. Hogan had just defeated Andre the Giant in one of the WWF's most historic matches, Hulkamania was running wild, the WWF was seeing a huge surge in popularity and WrestleMania 3 itself had been a huge box office draw. The next steps in Hogan's career was all about latching onto that WrestleMania 3 success. Hogan and Andre would meet more times in the ring as the WWF tried to capitalise on their biggest drawing wrestling show to date. It just made a lot of sense to move forward with more twists and turns to the Andre vs Hulk rivalry. Today's video then will take a look at how the WWF and Hulk Hogan followed up with the success of Mania 3. We will take a look at Hulk's key matches from Wrestlemania 3 in 1987 all the way to Wrestlemania 4 in 1988. Today's video then will end at Wrestlemania 4, making way for that dedicated Mega Powers video in the future that has been requested frequently on this channel. To tell the complete Hogan story though, this time period between Mania 3 and Mania 4 needs to be highlighted. There was some interesting stuff going on here including a huge title change and we also need to gain an understanding in regards to the Mega Power's biggest enemies, the Mega Bucks. Immediately following WrestleMania 3, Hogan didn't go into another storyline or feud. On the big TV shows, the Heenan family vs Hogan rivalry would continue but at live events, Hogan was having matches with the likes of Randy Savage, Kamala, the Honky Tonk Man and King Harley Race. We are going to jump straight over then to the first ever WWF Survivor Series event taking place on Thanksgiving night in 1987. Survivor Series was added to the WWF's pay per view calendar to piggyback off the success of WrestleMania 3. The world wanted to see more Hogan vs Andre and Vince McMahon would deliver. Vince got a little cutthroat here though with the Survivor Series. The event would go head to head with NWA's Starcade 87 and if cable companies decided to air Starcade instead of Survivor Series, well those same cable companies would not be allowed to broadcast WrestleMania 4. Most cable providers gave in to Vince McMahon here. Only a few aired the NWA Starcade event which was headlined by Dusty Rhodes taking on Lex Luger and Ric Flair taking on Ron Garvin. The main event of the first Survivor Series was a traditional Survivor Series elimination match. The heel team of Butch Reed, the One Man Gang, Rick Rude, King Kong Bundy and Andre the Giant squared off against Bam Bam Bigelow, Don Morocco, Ken Patera, Paul Orndorff and Hulk Hogan. Watching this match back today is actually a whole lot of fun. It had a high amount of drama mixed with good in ring action. In a surprising twist, Hulk Hogan ended up getting counted out during the main event match, leaving partner Bam Bam Bigelow to take on King Kong Bundy, the One Man Gang and Andre the Giant all on his own. Bam Bam eliminated Bundy and Gang, but Andre ended up pinning Bigelow and scoring the win for his team. This main event though was a real standout match for Bam Bam Bigelow and the WWF had an opportunity here to capitalise on the excellent fan reaction the Beast from the East got during the inaugural Survivor Series, but they never did go all the way with Bam Bam Bigelow. Hogan returned to the ring and attacked Andre the Giant and their feud would now resume. Immediately following the Survivor Series show, we had an episode of Saturday Night's main event where Hulk Hogan would defend the WWF Championship against King Kong Bundy. Before the match got underway, Andre the Giant came to ringside to get a better look at the action. Also, I can't go on here without pointing this out. Hogan's bandana had somehow grown tassels. God knows what he was thinking here, but anyway, on with the match. Bundy and Hogan had quite a good bout here. Hogan deviated from his usual heroic comeback match and instead, both men got a fair amount of offence in. There was a great atmosphere in the arena too and Andre being at ringside added a little intrigue here. Andre tripped Hogan up when the Hulkster went for the big leg drop and I love how casually Andre grabbed Hogan's foot here and because of Andre's actions he was sent back to the locker room. The Hogan vs Bundy match resumed after a commercial break and Bundy ended up getting the win after Hulk Hogan was again counted out, this time thanks to Bobby Heenan. After the match, King Kong Bundy demanded a rematch against Hogan only this time he wanted Andre in his corner throughout the entire match. Hulk agreed to the rematch, saying he actually hopes Andre is in King Kong Bundy's corner as the Hulkster will have all his Hulkamaniacs standing in his corner. 
The Bundy vs Hogan WWF Championship rematch would air on the 2nd of January 1988, again on Saturday night's main event. Andre the Giant was once again in King Kong Bundy's corner, meaning the Hulkster would have his hands full here. This match played out more like a standard Hulk Hogan bout, with Hulk starting off strong, then taking a beating in the middle of the match, and the finale would see the superhero comeback that we were all used to seeing. This time though, during the comeback, the referee got knocked out. Referee Dave Hebner came down to the ring, trying to get some assistance for his fallen compadre, and so the match was stopped. When we came back from commercial break, the match commenced with a new referee. High drama here on Saturday night's main event for sure. Hogan looked like he was down and out, but the regular comeback eventually came and the audience went nuts when Hogan won the match. Hogan began posing to the audience as usual, but Andre got in the ring. The giant grabbed Hogan and proceeded to choke him out in the middle of the squared circle. Multiple superstars came to the ring to try and save Hogan. Hacksaw Jim Duggan distracted Andre long enough for the other superstars to get Hogan out of the ring. And when everybody was gone, the giant stood tall, holding Hogan's WWF Championship. After the match, Bobby Heenan and Andre the Giant had an entertaining interview with Gene Okerlund, and Heenan promised that Andre the Giant would be WWF Champion in 1988. Ted DiBiase had worked in the WWF in 1979, but he found a huge amount of success when he returned in 1987 as the Million Dollar Man. The Million Dollar Man believed that everyone had a price, including Hulk Hogan, and instead of winning the WWF Championship in a more traditional sense by, you know, defeating the champion, Ted DiBiase decided that he would attempt to buy the WWF Championship from Hulk Hogan. Hogan, being the do-gooder and stand-up guy that he is, refused to accept DiBiase's money, and the two would have a series of matches that mainly unfolded on the house show loop, while Hogan's rivalry with the Heenan family unfolded on TV. DiBiase's attempts at buying the WWF Championship did make it to TV though, so before we get to the Royal Rumble, we need to take a look at the January 12th episode of Primetime Wrestling. Ted DiBiase had an interview segment where he said Hulk Hogan was a fool for not accepting a cash offer for the WWF Championship. Seeing as DiBiase was unable to buy the title then, DiBiase bought the next best thing. The Million Dollar Man bought the wrestler who was going to face Hogan for the championship, Andre the Giant. DiBiase said that when Andre wins the gold, the Giant would hand the title to the Million Dollar Man and Ted DiBiase would finally be the WWF Champion without even defeating the current reigning title holder. At the 1988 Royal Rumble then, a contract signing took place for the upcoming Hulk Hogan vs Andre title match that would take place on the very first WWF The Main Event Show. The main event was a Saturday night's main event spin-off show that aired on NBC, and the very first episode would host a colossal WWF Championship encounter, the WrestleMania 3 rematch pitting Hogan vs Andre. DiBiase stood in Andre's corner, remember if Andre defeated Hogan, then the Giant would hand the title over to the Million Dollar Man. The match got signed, and Andre slammed Hogan's head on the table that was set up before tossing Hogan and the table to the other side of the ring. Hogan vs Andre at the main event then, February 5th 1988. The unthinkable truly happened here when Hulk Hogan's 4 year title run came to a screeching halt in front of a staggering 33 million viewers at home. Championship belt fans will notice that this show also featured the debut of the Winged Eagle WWF Championship, my personal favourite WWE Championship belt of all time. Commentator Jesse Ventura made sure to mention that he's happy that Dave Hebner was refereeing this match, as there had been some controversy regarding WrestleMania 3 referee Joey Morella. Jesse believed that Joey should have counted to 3 when Andre fell on top of Hogan at WrestleMania 3, but anyway, here we go. Hogan took care of DiBiase and Virgil before focusing on Andre, and man, you can tell Andre wasn't the same competitor here as he was at even WrestleMania. His health was of course deteriorating at a more rapid rate here. He did look very tired at points, but nonetheless, the two still managed to have an entertaining match. The finish though was expertly done. Dave Hebner was getting easily distracted by Virgil and DiBiase, allowing Andre to get in cheap shots behind the referee's back. 
Hebner even missed Hogan's leg drop and a pinfall attempt, which would have obviously led to a Hulk Hogan victory, so it's at this point of the match where people maybe had a bad feeling here. Things weren't working in the Hulkster's favour. Andre then hit Hogan with his double underhook suplex. Andre pinned Hogan. Hogan got his shoulder up after a one count, but the referee continued to count. One, two, three, and the match was over. Andre the Giant had just defeated Hulk Hogan for the WWF Championship, and it seemed like Dave Hebner had screwed the Hulkster. Andre went ahead and put the belt around Ted DiBiase's waist after the match, and Hulk was left in the ring, no longer the World Wrestling Federation Champion. Just then, another referee appeared in the ring, another referee who looked exactly like Dave Hebner. Jesse Ventura on commentary couldn't understand how there could be two Dave Hebners, but of course it turned out that Dave's twin brother Earl Hebner was the one who just refereed this match. The two Hebners argued in the ring, leading to Hogan grabbing both referees. The Hulkster wanted some justice here, but he didn't know which Hebner was which. Hulk's head then melted in the middle of the ring. You can see the exact moment where he was like, what on earth is going on here? Evil referee Earl Hebner kicked his twin brother out of the ring, leading to Hulk grabbing Earl, throwing him out of the ring and also totally missing his target. Poor Earl went flying over Ted DiBiase's head here. And so it was all over. Ted DiBiase had paid Earl Hebner to count Hogan's shoulders to the mat. Well, if you want to get totally kayfabed with it, Ted DiBiase had paid someone to have plastic surgery to look like Dave Hebner, but they switched that angle and went with the evil twin thing a few weeks later. Anyway, Hulk wasn't the champion anymore and we were provided with one of wrestling's most entertaining finishes here of the late 80s. WWF President Jack Tunney said he watched the videotapes and unfortunately, a WWF referee's decision is always final, so Hulk Hogan was not the WWF Champion. However, Andre the Giant is not allowed to just surrender his WWF Championship to someone else, meaning that Ted DiBiase was not the WWF Champion, nor was Andre the Giant seeing as he had technically forfeited the title at the main event on February 5th. The title was vacated then and a championship tournament would be held at WrestleMania 4. Hogan and Andre would face each other and they got a buy into the quarterfinals, seeing as they were technically the last two champions, not including DiBiase of course. At WrestleMania 4 then in Atlantic City, Hogan and Andre would meet in the ring once again. The finish would turn out to be quite anticlimactic and also quite stupid. Hogan hit Andre with a steel chair that Ted DiBiase introduced to the match. The referee saw it, so you'd naturally assume that Andre wins via disqualification and he continues on in the tournament. But no. After Hogan hit Andre with the chair, the Giant took the chair himself and hit Hogan in retaliation, so the match ended in a double DQ. Normal rules clearly don't apply to the Hulkster here, but anyway, Hogan body slammed Andre after the match. The body slam isn't remembered as much as the previous year's WrestleMania, but still it was a nice callback here. And in the tournament finals, Randy Savage went on to defeat Ted DiBiase. The Macho Man was the new babyface world champion of the World Wrestling Federation, but keep in mind that Hogan had helped Macho Man even the odds during the finals, as Andre the Giant had been interfering on DiBiase's behalf during the matchup. Along with this, Hulk Hogan jumped into the ring and hit DiBiase with a steel chair while the referee's back was turned. Yes, I know Hulk was getting revenge here for DiBiase introducing the steel chair during Hogan's match with Andre. But jumping into a ring and swinging a chair behind the referee's back is such a heel move that it's surprising the WWF booked the match to end this way. Thanks to the chair shot, Savage was able to hit the elbow drop and secure the title. So it also gives the impression that Randy Savage needed Hulk Hogan to win the WWF Championship. This should have been Randy Savage's crowning moment, the Macho Man's pay-per-view, the one night we all point to as the greatest night in Savage's career, and it's funny how we just don't seem to do that. But on the flip side of this, and in the spirit of being fair, 
Hogan's involvement in the WrestleMania 4 main event speaks highly of how much the company relied on him. Even if we agree or disagree with how Hogan was used at WrestleMania 4, the WWF and Vince McMahon felt that Hogan sharing the ring with Savage to end WrestleMania would be the best way to end the show, a sure fire way to send fans home with a smile on their face. Hindsight is 2020 with these kind of things though. We all know that Randy Savage was more than capable of holding an audience in the palm of his hands all by himself. We all know Savage beating DiBiase clean would have been much better in terms of the story of Randy Savage, but the WWF done nothing but bank on Hulk Hogan's insane popularity at the time, and to give the WWF credit, it always worked. Something I'd also like to point out is that WrestleMania 4's promotional work was primarily focused around Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. This seems to be forgotten these days, but posters, flyers, closed circuit and pay-per-view advertisements all focused around Andre versus Hulk, and I feel that fans who maybe bought the pay-per-view just for that match may have felt slightly cheated. But you have to remember also that Andre the Giant's health was still getting worse. What's done is done. Without Hulk Hogan dropping the title, we wouldn't have had Randy Savage getting his time in the limelight. So all's well that ends well, I guess, at least for the time being. With the introduction of Randy Savage here to the Hulk Hogan story, we need to rewind and go back to October 3rd, 1987, Saturday night's main event. Randy Savage took on the Honky Tonk Man for the IC title. Randy had his signature elbow drop and it looked like he was about to become the new Intercontinental Champion, but the Hart Foundation stormed the ring, ending the match by laying a beating into Randy Savage. The Honky Tonk Man was about to hit Savage with his guitar, and this led to Miss Elizabeth getting into the ring, attempting to protect the Macho Man. The Honky Tonk Man though was having none of it, he pushed Elizabeth down to the mat, and she ran away to the backstage area while Randy ended up taking the guitar shot anyway. Just as it seemed all hope was gone, Elizabeth returned to the ring with Hulk Hogan, and the Hulkster got into the ring to help fend off the Honky Tonk Man and the Hart Foundation. Randy Savage extended his hand in friendship to Hogan, Hogan accepted, and the three baby faces paraded around the ring as the fans roared in approval. The madness and the mania had just come together in the middle of the squared circle. This night also pretty much cemented Randy Savage as a babyface. He had been on a slow turn, but this act of friendship with Hulk Hogan made him completely accepted by fans. Later that evening, during an interview segment with Gene Okerlund, Savage referred to himself and Hogan as the Mega Powers. Hogan and Savage would then team up at live events and house shows while continuing their respective solo feuds on TV, but this will all be covered in detail in the next Hogan video. So this is where this video ends because it's best to cover the whole Mega Powers storyline in one video. WrestleMania 5 would see the Mega Powers explode when Hulk Hogan took on Macho Man Randy Savage for the WWF Championship, and this will all get covered in the next Hulk Hogan upload here on Wrestling Bios. As always, thank you for watching and keep an eye out for the Mega Powers video in the very near future.